Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian, and this is the Weekend Ads episode. In this episode, we usually talk about guys that you should consider adding to help you secure your win for this week, week one of the fantasy hockey season. Now, I'm recording this before any of the games start week one. I'm going to get this out Wednesday morning this week because there are no games on Sunday, so the weekend I'm going to be counting this week as Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we're going to count those three games. Normally, I do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but because there are no Sunday games, I'm making an exception and releasing this on Wednesday, and that's why I'm recording this on Tuesday night before any of the games happen. So basically what I'm going to do is go through the weekend schedule with you, and then I'm going to go through players that play Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Saturday, and Friday, Saturday for you, and then suggest players to add for each of those combinations, and then I'll suggest players specifically for categories leagues. I'll talk about shots on goal, hits, blocks, and face-off wins. If you need a catch-up in those categories, be sure to check out the end of this video. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell, and if you do want to take your support to the next level, the link to my Patreon is in the description below. Let's jump right into it now, and let's start with the week one schedule for this weekend and on thursday there are 10 games on friday there are four and on saturday there are 14. so 28 out of 32 teams play on saturday so in all likelihood you have no room for anybody on saturday so i'm not going to be focusing too much on players that play saturday in this video just because your lineup if you go ahead and check it right now it's probably full on saturday now, Thursday and Friday are days that you may have a little bit more room. Thursday is also pretty busy, though, so check if you actually have any space. But Friday, for sure, you've got space to make some ads for this weekend. All right, so there's one team that plays both Thursday and Friday. Only one, and that is the New York Rangers. And that's why they have such a great schedule this weekend. Now, if you want to add a player from the New York Rangers to add for those two games, if you have room in your lineup, the number one guy that I would add is Vincent Trocek, who is owning 63% of leagues, I understand, is probably not available. But just in case, go ahead and check to see if Vincent Trocek is available because he's someone who's very, very valuable and should be owned, honestly, in more than 63% of leagues. He's someone that's going to get a lot of points alongside Panarin on that second line on that top New York Rangers deadly power play. And he's also someone that hits a decent amount as well to give you a safe floor every single night. The next guy that I would look at is Lexi Lafreniere, 39% rostered, playing on the third line. So definitely not my favorite deployment, that's for sure. But you know what? He had a really strong playoff run last year. And if he could continue that momentum from the playoffs, he might be someone who's decent to add for those two days. Then Vitaly Kravtsov, who's actually playing alongside Trocek and Panarin on that second line. It'll be interesting to see how he looks in the NHL, but he's definitely someone that you can consider adding for those two days for sure. Capo Kako, another guy who's definitely worth considering adding for those two days, considering that he's playing alongside Zabinijad and Chris Kreider, so definitely someone that I'd consider. Keandre Miller is the next guy I'd look at. He's a defenseman. Doesn't put up too much points, but he puts up a decent amount of hits, a little bit of blocks. Not something I'm super high on, but at this point, there's not many better options if you do need someone for those two days. And he's someone definitely to consider if you need a defenseman for both those days. Barkley Goodrow is someone you could also look at. He's playing third line with Lafreniere and Heedel. And the next guy is Heedle here. So those are the last two guys that are getting top nine minutes. And I only consider these guys if you don't have any room in your lineup on Saturday. You only have room Thursday and Friday, and there's nobody above these guys available on your waiver wire. Now there are 18 teams that play both Thursday and Saturday. Those teams are Arizona, Buffalo, Calgary, Chicago, Dallas, Florida, LA, Minnesota, Nashville, New Jersey, New York Islanders, Ottawa, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Seattle, Toronto, Vegas, and Washington. Now those are the two busiest nights of the week. Now if you want suggestions for players from these teams to look at, to add to your teams, you can check out my waiver wire video linked right up there. I have quite a few suggestions from these teams in my waiver wire video for week one, so definitely check that out, but I'm not going to be suggesting guys in this video because I'm just going to be suggesting pretty much the same guys as I already suggested in my waiver wire video, and on all likelihood, you'll have room in your lineup both those nights anyway. Now, if you want players that play both Friday and Saturday, Columbus, Detroit, Montreal, San Jose, and Tampa Bay all play both of those nights. Now, if some reason you actually do have room in your lineup on Saturday, well, the number one guy to add for those Friday and Saturday back-to-back -back games is Tyler Bertuzzi, 64% rostered, playing top line and top power play with Larkin and with Lucas Raymond, definitely in a very, very good spot to do well. Boone Jenner playing top line and top power play with Gaudreau and Liney. 
Oh man, that is beautiful. And I definitely like that as well. Jakob Verona playing second line with David Perron and Andrew Kopp. I like that. Nick Suzuki on the Montreal Canadiens playing top line with Josh Anderson and with Cole Caulfield. Obviously, Suzuki's the most talented player on Montreal and is definitely worth adding. Alex Kalorn, 37% roster, playing top power play in Tampa Bay with Point, with Kucherov, with Stamkos. Pretty good. Also second line with Nick Paul and Hagel. Andrew Kopp, who I already mentioned, playing with Perron and Verona. Good add there as well. Only 38% roster. And Logan Kutzer playing on the second line with Kevin LeBanc. He's a decent add as well. Then the next guy that I would consider adding, if all those guys are already available, Yegor Chinikov had an amazing preseason with six goals in six games and is playing on the second line with Jack Roslevic and Jacob Vortek, who's the next guy on this list. Then Nick Paul of the Tampa Bay Lightning playing second line with Hagel and Kalorn. Honestly, after joining Tampa Bay last year, did pretty well, so I don't mind adding Nick Paul. Luke Cunning is playing top line with Timo Meyer and Tomas Hurdle. Honestly, looked pretty good in the two games that he played so far, so definitely don't mind adding him for this back to back. Josh Anderson playing top line with Suzuki and Caulfield. Jack Roslevic, like I already mentioned, playing with Chinikov and Voracek. Then Brandon Hakel playing with Nick Paul and Kalorn. So those guys are all getting top six minutes. Then I'd go ahead and take my shot with Uri Slavkowski playing with Gallagher and Dvorak, two guys who are just a little bit down this list. I don't not really super high on any of these guys, but if there's nobody above them available in your pool, you might as well just take a shot at them if you really do need someone to stream for Friday and Saturday. Ross Colton is another guy who did really well last year with hits, shots on goal, and actually put up a decent amount of points as well playing on Tampa's third line, someone you can take a chance on. Kevin LeBanc is someone playing top six actually in San Jose, playing a second line with Logan Couture. Didn't look too, too bad in the couple of games that he did play against Nashville, so he's someone that I would consider as well. And then Cole Sillinger of the Columbus Blue Jackets playing on the third line right now for Columbus. So I'm not super high on that deployment. But if there's nobody else available, he's someone that I definitely would consider. And then Sean Monaghan, who's currently playing on the right wing on the third line in Montreal. But there are some rumors that Monaghan is finally fully healthy after multiple years with injury struggles. So he's definitely someone to keep an eye on. Personally, I'm not sold on it. Obviously, I live in Montreal, so there's all sorts of positive rumors going around for Monaghan. But for now, I'm definitely tempering my expectations. But if you are desperate, he's someone that you can consider. If you need a defenseman for Friday and Saturday, Mario Ferraro is the number one guy that I would look at. He looked really good in the couple games that he did play against Nashville. He's getting that PP2 time. He's blocking a lot of shots. Honestly, he's someone that might actually have some decent value this year, especially in leagues that have blocked shots. Eric Chernak's the next guy I would look at at Tampa Bay. He also hits a decent amount, blocks a little bit, puts up a point every now and then. Ben Sherratt is someone who puts up some pretty decent peripherals as well. He's playing with Detroit this year, so we'll have to see how that looks, but... While he's not the best defenseman in the world, the peripherals are there. Mike Matheson is someone who recently signed with Montreal. May not be healthy this week, so be careful. Don't pick him up if he's still injured, but definitely someone who will be interesting to see how he looks with Montreal. Should put up a point every few games or so. Chris Weidman's actually getting top power play time in Montreal. But if you're in a pure points league where there's no plus minus or peripherals or anything, Chris Weidman may actually be someone to look at because he is getting that top power play time on power play with Suzuki, with Caulfield. So you know what? He's not the worst ad in the world. Philip Peronek is someone who's getting PP2 time in Detroit. Not someone I'm overly high on. He doesn't put up that crazy good peripherals or anything like that. But he's definitely someone who could technically put up a point in two games. And then Adam Boquist, PP2 in Columbus. It's the Young Guns power play. A lot of young players on that power play. We're going to have to see how that looks. But for now, Adam Boquist, not super high on. And then Vladislav Gavrikov also puts up some decent peripherals. But honestly, none of these defensemen guys on this list are anybody that I'm super high on. And I'd only pick them up if you're really desperate and have room in your lineup only for a defenseman on Friday and Saturday. At least you'll get two games from one of these guys. Hopefully they can put up enough peripherals to, you know, give your team the win. If you need to stream a goalie on Friday, Brian Elliott should be getting the start versus Columbus because Vasilevsky should get the start versus Pittsburgh. Then Yaroslav Halak will probably get the second half of the back-to-back -back against Winnipeg. Now, that's not a bad streamer either. Then Alex Nedeljkovic probably gets the start versus Montreal, where Huso would get the start versus New Jersey. Definitely always a good idea to start your goalies versus Montreal. And then Jake Allen and Samuel Montembeau, one of them will get the start against Detroit on Friday. So Detroit, while they are a better team, there's still definitely a chance that they can win that game. And then Kapokakunin and Daniil Tarasov 
Probably won't see the start on Friday night, but I'm just mentioning them here because there is still a back-to-back -back set there. In all likelihood, though, Capo Kapanen gets Chicago on Saturday night, and Tarasov probably gets St. Louis on Saturday because on Friday night they play Tampa Bay. Jumping into the categories league section of the video now and if you need shots on goal you need to catch up in that category or you want to make sure you secure your win in that category because it's close. The number one guy that I would add is Victor Arvidsson. He shoots 3.4 times per game at least that's what he shot at last year. Should shoot at a pretty similar rate this year. He's playing on the same line with Moore and with Dano. I see him having a really solid season, especially in terms of shots on goal. Jeff Skinner shot 3.3 times last season. Jack Quinn, 3.1 in the seven games that we've seen him play so far, the five preseason and the two games that he played last year. He shot 3.1 times per game. Definitely a little bit of a riskier grab here, but Jack Quinn is someone who's very, very special and could have an amazing season this year. Jacob Chikrin, 3.0 times per game, although he is injured, so I'm not sure he'll be back this weekend. Just keep an eye on that. Cam Atkinson, 2.9. Eric Sinek, 2.9. Travis Konechny, 2.8. Boone Jenner, 2.7. And Oliver Bjorkstrand, 2.7 as well. If you need blocks, the number one guy to add is Connor Murphy, who blocked 2.6 shots on average per game last year. If you stream him for both games this weekend, you'll get about five blocks, which is pretty good. Alec Martinez, same thing, 2.6 blocks per game. McNabb, 2.6 as well. Ferraro, 2.4. Pullock, 2.3. Travis Hamnick, 2.2. And Andrew Peake, 2.1. If you need to catch up on hits or make sure that you maintain your lead in the category, the number one guy that you would add is Ryan Reeves. Plays those Thursday, Friday games and hits on average four times per game, which is fantastic. Reese Johnson is the next best guy who hits 3.8 times per game. Liam O'Brien, 3.6. Rista Linen, 3.5. Matt Martin, 3.3. Garden Hathaway, 3.3. Tanif, 3.3. And Judar Kyra, also 3.3. And the last category here is face-off wins. The number one guy that you would add in that category is Jonathan Taves, who won an average of 11.1 face-offs per game last year, which is absolutely fantastic. Boone Jenner won 10.9 face-offs per year last year as well. He sure 10.3, but make sure that he is healthy for this weekend. As of right now, when I'm recording this, he's injured, but definitely keep an eye on that. Kristen Dvorak, 9.8, only 2% rostered for those of you in deeper leagues. JG Pajot, 9.7 face-off wins per game. Colton Sissons, 9.1, also only 2% owned for those of you in deeper leagues. And then Joel Eriksson, 52% rostered and wins 9.1 face-offs per game. Two more guys who should be honorable mentions on this list are Ryan Johansson, who wins 8.7 face-offs per game, and Philip Dano, who wins 8.6 face-offs per game. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. If you do want to take your support to the next level, the link to my Patreon is down in the description. Thanks so much guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tip, and I'm so excited that the NHL season has finally begun.